Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. If, if he doesn't stop this soon, there's going to be a terrible accident here. Oh! oh my God. Uh-oh, they got him. And he wiped out. Tell the ambulance to come in. He's going right into that car. In the next 60 minutes, we will take you on the ride of your life. You will see pursuits from Tokyo to Tennessee. Every moment is real. And this is live on the power cam. Every action-packed chase was filmed while it actually happened. Stop him. Including some of the most bizarre and unusual pursuits ever seen. The bus is wrecked. Police agencies from all over the country have brought us their fastest and most exciting chases. It's a very frightening experience. I was scared to death. Because they want drivers to realize that in every single pursuit, there is a moment when it didn't need to happen. It ain't worth it! A moment of decision. And I just stood there like it's over with. So tonight, we bring you the most frightening chases from across the country when they to kill me. and around the world in the hope that it will help to convince that one driver for that one second not to run. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. I've been personally involved in pursuits for 26 years, and I've never seen anything that could be called a good pursuit. Every single one is terrifying and dangerous. So fasten your seatbelts. You're about to get a front seat view of the world's scariest police chases. We begin in South Carolina. A pickup out of control, and this truck was flying. The chase quickly got to high speeds, on the wrong side of the road, on the right side of the road, and on both sides of the road. This chase went down city streets, side streets, dusty roads, and country lanes. But when the trooper turned the next corner, he was in for a surprise. The truck had hit a vehicle and stopped, but only for a moment. Then the truck rammed the patrol car and took off in the other direction. But less than a mile away, the officer was able to catch up a second time when the truck slammed into another motorist and a police car. But when they tried to stop the truck, it roared off again, crashing once more into the patrol car. Hey, 33, Edward 14, he's done hit me head on. You want me to go ahead and try to get him out of the he's going to kill someone. Determined to stop this before someone was killed, the officer continued to give chase as the truck wildly veered from one side of the road to the other. At that point, the officer realized that the truck was taking a shortcut to the freeway. And if this person got on the freeway, someone was going to die. The truck tried to speed up one more time. It went off the road, lost control, and hit the officer. But the officer was still in for one more surprise. Until the very end, when I went up to the vehicle, I never had any idea and I didn't believe it would be a female until I actually saw her with my own eyes. I found out later that she was uh, smoking some crack cocaine, and if she had continued on and we hadn't have stopped her, I hate to think what could have happened. Uh, there was no telling. In every pursuit, your goal is to make things end safely. But when you have a hostage, you know, they're in that car, and they're praying to God that you're going to save them. Grand Prairie, Texas. An ex-con has taken a hostage and has been running for over an hour. The police have put spike strips across the road to puncture his tires. But he sees them before he gets to the intersection. They are firing at his tires as he pulls along the shoulder of the road. He's trying to go through a ditch and uh, might be able to negotiate that ditch. There he goes through the bar ditch. A lot of people are pulling off the road, which is a very wise thing to do. The police have to find a way to stop this car without risking the life of the hostage like he might be getting ready to take out a tire. There it is. The tire is out. The tire is out, Tim. He is in a spin. He is spinning, and he's having trouble controlling. He keeps skidding to the right. He's going to fishtail to the right. They've shot the rear tire so the truck won't lose control. But unbelievably, he still isn't stopping. Quickly, they pull up again, fire, and pull away. There they are. They're out of the car now. Texas DPS is on the scene. She's pulled out right now. She doesn't appear to be harmed. But behind the truck, the suspect is still fighting. And these officers have little patience after an almost two-hour pursuit. The hostage is being led away by the police. She is in shock. Every 
everything I do, I treat people with love and compassion like Jesus told us to love one another. The man is seriously deranged, claiming that he wasn't going to hurt anyone. Try telling that to the hostage who is now sitting in the police car shaking uncontrollably while the suspect continues to holler after her. I love you! This woman owes her life to the quick and decisive action on the part of the police. Newark, New Jersey. The police pull up just as the young men from the car on the left are finished hot-wiring the car on the right. The thieves are caught red-handed. Watch how they scramble to get away however they can. Both cars tear off, not waiting for their unlucky partners caught outside. The driver accelerates around the corner, almost losing his friend. They race through this quiet park at breakneck speeds, passing a huge truck on a blind corner at 75 miles an hour. The police slow down, and by the time they get to the street, the car thieves have disappeared. Then suddenly, one car full of suspects with a poor sense of direction passes the cops coming from behind. They cut right in front of the police and speed off recklessly. Because of the dangerous nature of this chase and the traffic at the time, the officer wisely called the chase off. No car thief in the world is worth the loss of innocent life. And the kind of honor among these thieves is only too apparent, as this driver risks his friend's life to make a fast getaway. But not before the police made a positive ID. Within a week, they were all arrested. Los Angeles. The police can't keep up with this motorcycle. We've seen that the police are still a couple of blocks behind this guy. In an amazing display of public cooperation, the street is suddenly filled with people who are determined to help the police and stop this chase. He's just driving around them. He's going right through that crowd. This guy is very arrogant. And now he's speeding up and he's just, oh. Incredibly, he's back on his feet and fighting to get away. But the pedestrians stop him. They chase him, grab him, and pull him down. Here, here's the police now, Dan. They're pushing the civilians out of the way right now. Uh, they're down to the swarm maneuver. One officer for each arm, each leg. They're going to make sure that this guy doesn't run away again. You'd better believe that. You don't have to be arrogant and stupid to run from the police. But it sure seems to work out that way. We have high-performance cars, and we have to have them to catch some of these cars on the road. This Formula Camaro thinks he's going to outrun the trooper's Mustang in South Carolina. Wrong. When he realizes they are still on his tail, he starts taking wild chances, passing on the right, pulling around exiting vehicles, weaving in and out of traffic at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. Watch as he almost hits a patrol car. Then he thinks he has a plan to outwit the officer behind him. The Camaro is now doing 120 miles per hour. First he scoots past his truck, but the trooper stays right behind him. He pulls to the left, drawing the trooper into the passing lane. And then at the last possible moment, he shoots for the exit ramp. But he's going too fast, and he loses it on the curve. There must be some special angel that watches out for speedy motorists, because miraculously, he survives, and he's up and running again. But this time, they get him and bring him back. He told me he didn't have a license is why he put all them people's lives in danger. Another high-performance car with a low-performance driver. Chases aren't like a football game. There's no whistle, there's no penalty flag, there's no instant replay. Uh, it's real time, it's the real thing, and it's final. Like a bat out of hell, this truck comes smashing through a roadblock in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Permission is granted to shoot out the pickup's tires. The tire practically explodes, sending dust and debris everywhere. The exposed rim is sparking on the pavement, but the truck shows no sign of slowing down. The other officer forces him into the shoulder, and once again the pickup almost crashes. More shots are fired, this time to the truck's right rear tire. Watch again carefully and you can actually see the bullets hitting the pavement. Moments later the truck fishtails wildly and spins out of control into a ditch. This case is over as suddenly and as violently as it started. Just crashed. This is real. 
From the deadly insanity of reckless abandon to the heart-pounding terror of chases at night. This is where the buck stops. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the beginning of a typical busy night. Headquarters, they're getting ready to come up here on to the area. The officer didn't have to go very far looking for this pursuit. This time, the pursuit came looking for him. And he's right down by headquarters, 1050. He's taking off again. But with the rear end of his car smashed and dragging on the ground, he wasn't going to go far. Headquarters, they've got him. But with a character like this, they don't know what he's going to do next. They want him out and cuffed fast. They quickly arrested the suspect and got back on the road. From the time the pursuit began until the man was taken into custody was less than five minutes. So this night began with a bang, and it wasn't going to be over for another ten long hours. In any chase, there's fear. The officer's afraid, the bad guy's afraid. And fear can do two things. Fear can help you focus, or fear can help you fail. Whittier, California. This van has been reported stolen. The police have been chasing this van from Ontario to Whittier. We have clocked the suspect at 90 miles an hour, once through a local school zone. There are motorists who are swerving to avoid collision here. A van going like 80 almost ran right into me. It looks like these guys seriously mean to get away. They are not stopping until something stops them. After a gun is thrown from the van, the police decide to take desperate measures. These officers are trying to get close enough so that they can use what they call the pit maneuver. And what that involves is tapping the rear bumper, forcing that vehicle to turn. Watch what happens now when the van goes into this corner. They've hit the van. The van has hit the curb. It's overturned. Oh, they hit him again. While the suspects are still stunned, the police surround the van. Guns drawn, kicking in the windows. They're pulling suspects out of the van. The police would like to subdue these suspects before they can even think about putting up a fight. So thanks to a quick and daring response, this pursuit was ended before anyone got hurt. Largo, Florida. Night is the time for bizarre stories and unusual reactions. But this is one of the strangest and most perplexing of them all. Okay, seven. We're going to go westbound on 118. The deputy has spotted this man, Jonathan Stoker, driving this car earlier. Thinking the car may possibly be stolen, the deputy proceeded to pull the man over. No problem. The man seems to cooperate. He pulls to the side and calmly smokes a cigarette. As another deputy arrived, also with a video camera rolling, Stoker was told to get out of the car. Turn off the car and step out. Calmly, the man tosses out his cigarette and then proceeds to run for it. And the chase is on. But why does he run? This man has no reason to run. He isn't wanted. He hasn't stolen the car. Why? Notice he drives fast and aggressively. He forces a police car off the road. This is more than an attempt to get away. This is attempted murder. And then he roars off down the road, driving wildly, taking corners at breakneck speed. The police realize that they have to do something before this man kills an innocent motorist. But he smashes into a deputy who gets too close. Then he comes back to ram the officer again. The officer sees an innocent motorist on the right and tries to force Stoker toward the left. Then Stoker suddenly pulls into the opposite lane right in the path of oncoming traffic. He pulls down side streets, desperately trying to elude the police. Now several units are scrambling to keep up, but still he doesn't slow down. He goes over a curb across someone's lawn and back onto the road. He takes off at full speed, racing away from the police. But then his luck runs out as he realizes this is a dead-end street. Finally, he seems to be totally surrounded, but he suddenly comes charging back at the police car. Then he tried to run down this officer. The officer fired his weapon to save his own life. A tragedy. And to this day, no one knows why. They don't know why the man ran, why he rammed the police, or why he tried to run the officer down. Pursuits at night, a terrifying business. Sometimes you get into a chase and you do everything right and nothing seems to work.
When it comes to lunatic pursuits, this one has to take the cake. This man has been running from the police in that huge delivery truck for two and a half hours. The owner of the truck found out when the pursuit showed on TV. I got a phone call saying, that's your truck. And I go, you've got to be kidding. The police have tried everything. Looks like they're going to shoot the tires out. I pulled alongside the vehicle, even with his left rear tires, and uh, rolled the electric windows down and fired across the unit. The police have shot. They have hit the tires, but he is still going. If anything, he's going faster. The police are trying to force this truck to spin out. This is very dangerous, especially with a truck this large. He looked really scared. Like, he wasn't going to stop for anybody, and he didn't care. Well, we've been on this pursuit for a number of hours now. Uh, the tires are blown out, but look at the sparks. That's It's not stopping him. The police decide to try one more time to force him off the road. They attempt to, to stop him by pushing the, the rear of the truck in an effort to make him either slide to the side and stop against the curb. He was pulled from the cab, bleeding and incoherent. Strangely enough, this pursuit began when an officer approached the truck to tell the driver he was headed the wrong way on a one-way street. The officer wasn't even going to give the man a ticket. The driver admitted he had been smoking marijuana and freaked when he saw the cop. At his arraignment, the man said he was on parole, and he ran because he was afraid if he was caught, he'd be sent back to prison. The police, however, said that nothing he had done would have sent him back to prison until he decided to run. Here we are in Greenville, South Carolina. When the patrol car attempts to stop the speeding motorcycle, the woman turns and glares at the police. Okay, he's, he's not going to stop, so uh, be careful. For some reason, motorcycle riders are convinced they can outrun any police car if they are just willing to take wild chances. Now be careful, Robert. He will run into you. Listen as the officer pleads with him not to risk their lives. Pull it over. Pull it over. You go down that thing. Pull it over. It ain't working. It ain't worth it. Pull it over. The officer tries again and again. Hey, boy, it ain't nothing in the world worth dying, pull it. The police car passes the motorcycle, hoping that once in front of the bike, it will be forced to slow down. Then the motorcycle begins a deadly game of cat and mouse, from one side to the other on this narrow two-lane road. For safety's sake, the officer allows the man to pass. All right, Gray, well, he's still rolling. They roar down the road at speeds up to 115 miles an hour. Finally, the police are ready to move again. Box him right there. A second unit passes the motorcycle. Listen as the officer in the passing car coordinates this delicate maneuver with his partner. Hold up, Robert. Get by me. Don't get on me too tight. Don't get on me too tight. Watching the motorcycle in the rearview mirror, the officer also has to watch for traffic coming over the hill. And again, a narrow miss. Down here, they refer to people who run from the law on motorcycles as organ donors. Got a curve, got a curve, be careful. Now the other car tries to get in front. Coming around, coming around. And that's when it finally happens. The motorcycle tries to pass the cop on the left, flies off the road, and crashes in the ditch. In my rearview mirror, I could see that he had injured his leg when he actually set his foot down to try to regain balance. And I saw his leg go back underneath the wrong direction that a leg usually goes, so I knew he had broken his leg. Uh, it's nothing that you want to look forward to. It's a very stressful situation. It wears you down. It, it'll burn you out real fast, and it, it causes a lot of problems for you. Speed and danger. Some people are attracted like a moth to a flame. They see the light. They make the choice. They slam into gear, and it's just too late. You're going down. Because no matter how it started, they didn't think it would end like this. Pleasant Grove, Utah. 2.15 in the morning. Time for drunks to head home when this officer spots a possible DUI. At speeds in excess of 80 miles per hour on these country roads, the officer is eating a lot of dust. At one point, the driver seems like he'll stop and then pulls ahead. He is now driving with no concern for life or limb. The other patrol units try to slow him down, but he just doesn't stop him, so they decide to put down spike strips to blow out his tires. But watch what happens. He hits the spike strip dead center. You can see both tires explode. But something is wrong. He should be stopping, but he isn't. He's driving on flat tires, shooting up showers of sparks. Is this man crazy or drunk or what? 
His tire goes rolling into the ditch. Unbelievably, the man is still going 80 miles an hour riding on the rims. The wheels are tearing up the road, but he's passing everything in sight. Then both tires collapse and the truck is entirely on the rims. We got fluid on the ground now. Oil and gasoline are spilling onto the road. Flames and sparks are pouring out of the truck. On every bump, the car is bottoming out and pieces of the muffler are flying behind, smashing the officer's window. Oh, God. Miraculously, he is able to pull the truck off the road before it explodes. Calmly, the officer asks him a question. And in four little words, the man explains it all. What is your problem, bud? <laughs> I need a beer. I've found that people run because they're not thinking straight. Maybe they have personal problems, problems with the law, problems with alcohol, but they're not doing what they ordinarily would do. Dallas, Texas. A helicopter monitors every mile as this grueling chase continues at speeds in excess of 90 miles per hour. Right now, several police department agencies are involved in this pursuit. That's the car down there. It is a white Buick. Looks like they may be getting ready to do a move. Oh, looks like it's going to be a northbound. It's now turned into a dirt road. and. Uh, Looks like this road is about to make a sharp 90 degree turn. Well, there's an unmarked police car right on his tail. The police are being particularly careful because they've discovered the man's wife is in the car and that she's eight months pregnant. Oh, there's a car coming the other direction about a mile up ahead. As a matter of fact, it is a sheriff's deputy. Watch as the driver sees the approaching deputy and then suddenly pulls across the road, inviting the deputy into a head-on collision. The car pulled off the road, let him by. Miraculously, the deputy pulls off the road just in time to avoid a disaster. It's real stressful. I mean, you want to catch the suspect, but it was obvious that his speed never did slow, never did fluctuate, you know, and he wasn't going to stop. It looked like the fugitive was playing chicken, and they're headed right towards the town of Denton. But before they can get to Denton, luck runs out. The driver tries a series of bizarre twists and turns. He uh, reversed direction here. He started on one side of the road, went to the other side of the road, turned around. Of course, the police were following him. He's turning back on his own trail and eluding the cars behind him. He went behind the first two police cars. He rams past another patrol car, runs through a barrier, and credibly, he speeds away. But he's just going too fast for the road. And once that heavy car starts to fishtail, it's all over. He started to lose, it went to the left, went back to the right, skidded, and hit a fence in a tree, hit a telephone pole. Wisely, the man makes no further resistance. We came out with his hands up, they had a box in, and uh, there was nowhere to go. Amazingly, the woman was not injured in the crash, but she sits, staring in shock, unable to move, as her husband surrenders. You wonder if this man thought even once about the danger to his unborn child. Los Angeles, California. Police have been chasing this man for almost an hour from Long Beach Harbor to Pasadena. Okay, he's doing about 90 miles an hour, moving all over. Oh, he almost lost it. He almost lost it. He's in the carpool lane. Racing wildly from lane to lane, the man becomes more and more careless. He exits the freeway and leads the police on a desperate chase over surface streets, at times going the wrong way. This is very dangerous. He's just blowing through those red lights. This is extremely dangerous. There, he's just crashed. He's just crashed. He's broadsided a white sedan. The chase is over. Now he's being surrounded by the police. They're pulling him out of the car, taking him into custody. We later discovered that this was a man wanted by the police for many sexual crimes against children. A terrible accident. But tonight, a sexual predator is in jail, where he can't harm anyone else. It doesn't matter how bad they've been. It doesn't matter what they've done. We want the chase to end with them alive. Police are in hot pursuit of a teenage couple they believe committed several violent carjackings. The driver puts the pedal to the floor and goes flying through traffic. He had to be driving around 80. At these speeds, the police don't even try to keep up. But he finally loses control. <laughs> Trying to make a right turn, the car flips, pinning the passenger's arm outside the window. The driver runs away, leaving his girlfriend bleeding on the road. Tell the ambulance to come in and hurry! Neighbors watch in horror as paramedics try to save the girl's life. The suspect is quickly caught and brought back to the scene. He shows no remorse as his accomplice is put into an ambulance. Even the police are in shock. Both carjackers were in their teens. The girl survived to stand trial. A terrible crime a terrible price to pay. The wild, wild ways of criminals when they attempt to run from the law.
They risk the wrong way. They try the weird way. They insist on the hard way. They'll even take the slow way. But from the moment they start, they know it'll end in a bad way. Las Vegas, Nevada. When the police tried to stop this man for having stolen plates, he took off in reverse. And the police found themselves in a high-speed pursuit with a car going backwards. This is unbelievable that he can hold, that he can keep that car on the road. I have never seen anything like this. Dispatch notified North Unit to get behind the vehicle. He's going backwards at a very high rate of speed. Amazingly, the driver was able to control the car at incredible speeds. This guy drives better than I do going forward. Oh, he almost lost it there. He almost lost control. He, he's not going to slow down. If anything, he's going faster. Uh, still back. Uh, let's go first. Okay, it looks like he's slowing down. They have him surrounded. But they forgot one thing. His car was pointed in the other direction. Okay, they got him. They got him. This is this pursuit is over. No, they don't. He's okay. He's running out of the car. Suspect's running. This guy's not going to give up. This guy really does not want to get caught. Like a broken field runner, he's weaving and dodging every vehicle that comes his way. Yeah, I got him. Cut him off. They have him in custody, but he sure gave them a chase for their money. Here's an example of someone running on pure adrenaline. The amazing thing is that he didn't kill anybody doing 70 miles an hour, going backwards. One of the strangest pursuits I ever heard about was the guy that walks into the Bentley dealership, tells the salesman he's God, and then takes a car for a long test drive. Dallas, Texas. Land of big cars and big delusions. This man is driving a car worth more than all the police cars behind him. This chase began with an unusual test drive at the local Rolls-Royce Bentley dealership. So far, the suspect has led the police on a low-speed chase, but traffic is backed up for miles. Then an impatient motorist decided to help the police, but the Bentley speeds up and roars around him. Looks as though the squad car is pulling it in front, trying to force this Bentley to slow down. But it doesn't work. The powerful Bentley comes up behind the police car and starts to ram him, pushing him off the road. The police are in a bind. How do you stop a $200,000 automobile without destroying it? And then he rammed one of the patrol cars and then tried to strike another one, so they decided with this kind of driving that they'd shoot the tires up. We can see from our vantage point that they are actually shooting at the tires of the suspect vehicle. With the traffic as heavy as it is and him deciding that uh, he's going to start ramming vehicles, it was time we had to make him stop. The suspect is in custody. Afterward, the man behaved as if it were just another test drive. It's taking my time. It's my own business. I mean, didn't you know you were being followed? Oh, yes. I was doing 30 miles an hour. Despite his claims to divinity, the suspect was pronounced fit to stand trial. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. This bizarre and dangerous chase began in rush hour and baffled police for more than an hour. There's eight patrol cars behind it, nine patrol cars, ten patrol cars behind it. But this fellow has been driving very erratically, going from side to side. So far, we haven't seen him hit any other uh, cars, but we've seen him come awfully close. The suspect is driving the powerful Chevrolet Caprice, the same car many police departments use. So he's able to stay ahead of them when he wants to. It just seems that sometimes he doesn't want to. He just jumped the curb back, going the other direction again and uh, successfully got around. Looks like the police car was trying to uh, box him in. Uh, okay, now he's he's turning around. Looks like he may be getting off on the arm. He's going the wrong way right now. And, uh, oh, we may see an accident here. Oh, that was a close one there. All right, let's see where he's going to go this time. Yep, he, he's just going the wrong way. On It's an entrance ramp, and he's exiting on it. People are pulling over when he comes through, and uh, he's still going the wrong direction. And we may see a head-on collision here in a moment. Uh, there's people still trying to get on. The police were unwilling to follow the wrong way down the entrance ramp. So at this point, there's a good chance the suspect could get away. I, I'm looking up ahead. I don't see any uh, city police vehicles up ahead, so he is off. Incredibly, after more than an hour pursuit, with police from six agencies never more than a few feet away, they have lost this man. I can't see exactly where he is. Well, there he is. But uh, he eluded the uh, police officers again, and he's going to be back in traffic again. I thought they were going to trap him there. They looked like they had blocked uh, the exits on that, and uh, he got out the one area that he could. He's turned around again. He just got off the Royal Lane. He's north on MacArthur, and uh, headed up towards North Lake uh, area. Now he's turning around. Oh, they just, they just jammed him. They just jammed him. The police have just uh, rammed his car. 
and they've got them boxed in. They've got uh, weapons drawn. They're pulling him out of the car, and uh, they've got him out on the ground there, and uh, they've got him secured. And it uh, looks like uh, he is in custody. The chase began when this man took his child, assaulted an officer, and then drove off with the child in the car. Listen as the police radio broadcasts a warning. Be advised, the person's vehicle is armed, considered dangerous, has the young child vehicle with him. He's traveling at a very high rate of speed on these very slippery streets. Now he's turning, going into an alley. This man has taken an insane risk for someone who has his own child in the car. He's back on the street. He's back on the street. Now he's going over the curb into the park. Th thank God it's wintertime or this park would normally be filled with kids at this time of the day. Okay, I've lost him. He's dodging around so much, it's, it's hard to keep up. No, 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 there he is. Okay, it looks like he's trapped himself in that parking lot. It looks like the police will have to surround him. No, wait a minute. He's shooting backward. He's driving backwards right through that cyclone fence. And he's off, going, going down the alley. Notice, what he does now completely baffles the police. He's shooting through those intersections. If he doesn't stop that, there's going to be a terrible accident here. He's going faster. Okay, he's weaving around again, dodging in and out of those police cars. He's winding around he, like this was some sort of game. Now that there's a police car right beside him. But at these speeds, they don't they don't dare. Now now he's going to turn like my god! He hit he ran right into that car. Two officers are running toward the car, getting, trying to get those windows open. The police quickly pull the child out of the car and bring him to safety. However, the man continues to struggle with the officers, and it takes several minutes for them to handcuff him. Notice that the driver of the other vehicle staggered out of the car. He stumbled across the sidewalk, and he, and he collapses on the sidewalk. Another innocent victim of an insane and senseless chase in which a man was willing to risk not only the lives of other motorists, but the life of his own child. We in America certainly haven't cornered the market on high-speed pursuits. People all over the world are making the same mistake, thinking they can outrun the law. No matter where you go in the world, this is the pursuing officer's worst nightmare. The hopeless ones. The ones who don't care if they live or die. Because in any country, in any language, they're going for broke. And they'd like to take you with them. Auckland, New Zealand. For 45 minutes, a helicopter followed above as the police chased a stolen car. First, the driver outran the police. When they got too close, he took insane chances, turning into the path of oncoming traffic. When they tried to force him off the road, he accelerated and jumped ahead. He slipped through every roadblock. The Auckland police were so frustrated, they were throwing their nightsticks at the car. Now watch what happens when they think they have him cornered. But suddenly, everything goes wrong. An officer approaches the car, thinking his partner has the car blocked from behind. Big problem. And he's in for the ride of his life. Two other officers run to the car, but this time the driver and the passenger lock their doors hit again and they're off and running. It was only a miracle that this officer wasn't killed. And that wasn't the last of the things that went wrong. In the furor of the arrest, there were lots of problems. This officer is almost crushed when the police car rams the suspects. Seconds later, these two officers have another close call when the cops hit the car again. But the biggest surprise for the Auckland police came when they finally caught the suspect. Who was this expert driver? This road warrior who outdrove and outmaneuvered them at every turn? A 15-year-old kid who stole a car for the fun of it. Sometimes you get in a chase with a vehicle that's too big for you to stop, but that doesn't mean that you can just quit. You've got to continue on. Los Angeles. Four teenagers have stolen a motor home. When the police try to stop them, they take off, leading the police on a wild five-hour chase well into the next morning. This RV must have a huge gas tank. We've been following it now for over six freeways. The suspects careen through rush hour traffic at 90 miles an hour. Other cars gladly get out of the way. And then, for reasons known only to them, they exit the freeway and take the vehicle off-road into the high California desert. It looks like these guys 
uh, are doing about 40 miles an hour on these very bumpy trails. They somehow managed to make it through this rugged terrain. Okay, we've got a hairpin turn coming up. Uh, talk about a sporty course. Some, some of these trails are barely wide enough for a dirt bike, let alone a 35-foot RV. Looks like he, he might be stuck here. No, he's putting, he's, he's in reverse, he's on the move. Through sagebrush and Joshua trees, the motorhome continues on its reckless path. But as long as there's some kind of road in front of them and gas in the tank, they'll keep running. Okay, we're, we're now downhill again, and you've got to wonder how long... Okay, stand by. Oh! He almost lost it there. But it's only a matter of time until the driver's luck runs out. Watch what happens when he tries to get past this dry wash. He gets stuck. And not knowing what else to do, he panics and takes off on foot. But he and the other suspects have nowhere to hide. They had bragged before that, that they could outrun the, the uh, police. Their joy riding is over for now. The only four-wheeling they'll be doing for a while is in the back of this highway patrol unit. And now a rare look through two different police cameras of a chase at 120 miles an hour that took these officers through three separate states. When they tried to kill me three or four times, an officer begins ramming the vehicle, a tricky procedure at 110 miles an hour. Hey, Randy, I believe he just shot at me. He shot my window out. Clearly, this is a suspect with nothing to lose. And moments later, he clips the officer's right front bumper. Damn. Randy, back off us. He's in a wreck. The suspect will not stop, and the officers have to look for help wherever they can get it. Hey, one of you big trucks wants him to get side to side. Let's stop this guy before he kills somebody. Get over there, the light, fellas. Hold him up. Block him, block him, block him. Shut him down. The officers finally get their chance when two big rigs have the suspect boxed in. Okay, well, here we go. I'm ready. Let's get him, buddy. Let's get him right here. But somehow he manages to squeeze through safely. He's made it through. And the chase continues. If I get him the right nudge, he's pissed him. Let's be careful, He's lose the Suddenly, the suspect gets off the highway onto another road. I don't know where we're going to. Roger, but we're going. If I can get out of this mud. The officer sees the suspect at the bottom of the hill and races to him. Wait just a minute. Over two hours and three states later, the suspect is finally stopped. In Japan, people don't have guns. They don't run from the police. They're a very law-abiding nation, so this is pretty unique. Kyushu, Japan. This chase began in a tragic and violent domestic dispute when this man got drunk and started to beat his wife and children. They hid at a neighbor's house, but the man took his hunting rifle, murdered the neighbor, and dragged his children away. This started a terrifying chase through this quiet city where almost no one owns a gun and no one runs from the law. Coming into Kyushu, the man sees that the police have the road blocked ahead. Crowds gather as he pulls to a stop. He brings a high-powered rifle out as onlookers stare in surprise. He calmly looks around. As an officer comes toward him, the man raises the gun and fires. Soldiers and police officers gather to attack as the man fires at anyone who gets close. Seeing that the road is blocked in both directions, the man leaves his kids in the car and calmly starts to tear down the barricade. As he again fires towards the police, they decide to charge the car. But before they can reach him, he goes through the fence and over the cliff, seemingly not caring that his kids could die at any moment. People below scramble to get clear as the Mitsubishi comes smashing down the hill, careening through gardens and yards, trying to find a road, looking for a way to get away from the police. Finally, he finds his way back onto a road that promises freedom. Police and neighbors alike charge after the car, begging for him to stop, to think about the lives of the little children in the car. But he races down the road at terrifying speeds, weaving between cars and trucks, veering through the wrong side of the road. He's now getting into heavy traffic, but he isn't slowing down. You can see the children inside hanging on for dear life. The police and military prepare barricades at every possible road. The helicopter tracks his path, but from above, they can only watch in horror as he races toward the police car blocking his path. As he smashes into the police car, officers rush toward the car, throwing their shields at the windows. 
They're still afraid to use their guns because of the children. Then he slows down. What game is he playing now? The cops try again to break into the car. But he races away, sending officers sprawling and heads straight for the roadblock. But this time he doesn't get through. They surround the car, rescue the children, and take the deranged man away. The Japanese almost never own guns and never run from the police. But in any country, anywhere in the world, alcohol and anger can drive people to do things they would never do otherwise. Obviously, this is a serious and deadly business, a no-win situation. And we've seen over and over here tonight that once a decision is made, once a person has started to run for it, there is usually no turning back. Hillsborough, Oregon. This driver is acting like this two-lane road is his own private speedway. Ironically, he still continues to use his turn signal, just like he learned in driver's ed. But watch what happens as he swings left to avoid a vehicle on the side of the road. Passing that car puts him in the wrong lane as he comes into a curve. But at this speed, the rear end starts to fishtail. And on these roads, there is no margin of error. The officer plunges into the smoking wreckage to find some sign of life, hoping that by some miracle the driver survived. Amazingly, this driver did survive, thanks to the life-saving measures taken by this dedicated policeman. It's a tragedy we've seen played out all over the world. On crowded city streets, wide-open freeways, and two-lane country roads. The terrible consequences when someone thinks they can outrun the law. They reach that moment of decision and they panic. Lives are destroyed, sometimes lost. So the next time you see flashing lights behind you, and you think things couldn't possibly get any worse, think again. side of the road and on both sides of the road this chase went down city streets side streets dusty roads and country lanes but when the trooper turned the next corner he was in for a surprise the truck had hit a vehicle and stopped but only for a moment then the truck rammed the patrol car and took off in the other direction but less than a mile away, the officer was able to catch up a second time when the truck slammed into another motorist and a police car. But when they tried to stop the truck, it roared off again, crashing once more into the patrol car. Hey, 33 Edward 14, he's done hitting me head on. You want me to go ahead and try to get him? Hey, if you can, he's going to kill him. Determined to stop this before someone was killed, the officer continued to give chase as the truck wildly veered from one side of the road to the other. At that point, the officer realized that the truck was taking a shortcut to the freeway. And if this person got on the freeway, a moment of decision. And I just stood there like it's all we're with. So tonight, we bring you the most frightening chases from across the country they to kill me. and around the world in the hope that it'll help to convince that one driver for that one second not to run. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. I've been personally involved in pursuits for 26 years, and I've never seen anything that could be called a good pursuit. Every single one is terrifying and dangerous. So fasten your seatbelts. You're about to get a front seat view of the world's scariest police chases. We begin in South Carolina. A pickup out of control, and this truck was flying. The chase quickly got to high speeds on the wrong side of the road. On the right, someone was going to die. The truck tried to speed up one more time. It went off the road, lost control, and hit the officer. But the officer was still in for one more surprise. Until the very end, when I went up to the vehicle, I never had any idea, and I didn't believe it would be a female until I actually saw her with my own eyes. I found out later 
that she was uh, smoking some crack cocaine. And if she had continued on and we hadn't have stopped her, I hate to think what could have happened. Uh, there was no telling. In every pursuit, your goal is to make things end safely. But when you have a hostage, you know, they're in that car and they're praying to God that you're going to save them. Grand Prairie, Texas. An ex-con has taken a hostage and has been running for over an hour. The police have put spike strips across the road to puncture his tires. But he sees them before he gets to the intersection. They are firing at his tires as he pulls along the shoulder of the road. He's trying to go through a ditch and uh, might be able to negotiate that ditch. There he goes through the bar ditch. A lot of people are pulling off the road, which is a very wise thing to do. The police have to find a way to stop this car without risking the life of the hostage. Looks like he might be getting ready to take out a tire. There it is. The tire is out. The tire is out, Tim. He is in a spin. He is spinning, and he's having trouble controlling. He keeps getting to the right. He's going to fishtail to the right. They've shot the rear tire so the truck won't lose control. But unbelievably, he still isn't stopping. Quickly, they pull up again, fire, and pull away. There they are. They're out of the car now. Texas DPS is on the scene. She's pulled out right now. She doesn't appear to be harmed. But behind the truck, the suspect is still fighting. And these officers have little patience after an almost two-hour pursuit. The hostage is being led away by the police. She is in shock. Everything I do, I treat people with love and compassion. Like Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. If, if he doesn't stop this soon, there's going to be a terrible accident here. Oh! They got him, and he wiped out. Tell the ambulance to come in. He's going right into that car. In the next 60 minutes, we will take you on the ride of your life. You will see pursuits from Tokyo to Tennessee. Every moment is real. And this is live on the power cam. Every action-packed chase was filmed while it actually happened. Stop him. Including some of the most bizarre and unusual pursuits ever seen. The bus is wrecked. Police agencies from all over the country have brought us their fastest and most exciting chases. It's a very frightening experience. I was scared to death. Because they want drivers to realize that in every single pursuit, there is a moment when it didn't need to happen. It ain't worth it! 